Hi, this is Heather with Free Speech TV. Free Speech TV is proud to have Amnesty International as our community partner for the film Pussy vs. Putin. We are honored to be joined by Samir Goswami. Welcome, Samir. It's great to be here, and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, the airing of this movie. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, so our viewers just watched Pussy vs. Putin. Um, Amnesty International has been at the forefront of this campaign. Can you tell us a little bit about your work with Pussy Riot and how um, you guys got involved with that? Absolutely. Uh, Amnesty International, as you know, is it's a global movement of people throughout the world who are standing up for human rights. And when we heard about uh, the case of Pussy Riot and uh, their protest song in Christ the Savior Church, and then their subsequent arrest and, and persecution, it really captured our imagination. And as you, as you can imagine, uh, many of our activists are young people, young people throughout the United States who go to college, who go to high school, and uh, who believe in the power of music, who believe in the power of peaceful protest. And when they heard about what happened with, uh, with Pussy Riot and the individual band members, uh, they really became very active in trying to do all they can to support the band members, but more broadly to support uh, the freedom of expression in Russia. And as we're, we're having this march towards Sochi, the next Olympics in February in Russia, and there's a lot of conversation about Russia's uh, stage in the world, there is also a lot of an increased awareness about human rights. And not only have our members been very active on the Pussy Riot case, but they realize that there is an overall broader crackdown on the Freedoms Expression Association Assembly in Russia, and they want to do something about it. And I think what's great about what's been clearly shown in your documentary is that the members of Pussy Riot were just young people, young women, who were very concerned about the direction their country was heading in. And in more specifically, they were concerned that uh, if President Putin was reelected, there would be this dangerous collusion between a very orthodox conservative church and the state. And that would have all kinds of repercussions on the civil fabric of society. And so they took action. You know, they did all these day-to-day these -day protests in the subway system outside and at landmarks throughout Moscow. Uh, and they finally, the law caught up with them and arrested them. And now, you know, two of the members are, are serving prison time. So as we continue and as our members continue to be inspired by their songs, by their lyrics, and their everyday act of protests, they're also taking action to put pressure on the Russian authorities to not only release the band members, but also to stop cracking down on human rights in Russia. Obviously, there are so many other issues within human rights in Russia. Um, can you uh, tell our viewers at home or who are watching online um, just what human rights in Russia looks like today? Well, sadly, human rights in Russia uh, are under threat. They're under risk. Since President Putin was re-elected and was inaugurated as, as president, we have documented the arrest of over 5,000 protesters and over 200 protests throughout the country. The beauty of the election season was thousands of Russians took to the streets because they were worried. They were worried about their, the direction their country was heading in. Uh, and they were peacefully protesting. Many of them were peacefully protesting uh, the direction that they were worried about the country was taking. Uh, and they wanted to have accountability from their government. And these were peaceful protests throughout the country, not just in Moscow, but in St. Petersburg and rural areas and urban areas. And fortunately, that voice and that collective activism has been met with repression. So not only have we seen laws passed that restrict the Freedom of Expression Association Assembly, but we've also seen laws that are passed that uh, put LGBTI individuals at risk as well. We've also seen a targeting of not-for-profit organizations and civil society that are often the bedrock of many communities. Uh, many not-for-profit organizations that are receiving foreign funding and now have to register as, as foreign agents, which has a very negative connotation in Russia. And many not-for-profit organizations, now these organizations that provide community services, not just advocacy uh, for people in Russia, they've been targeted as well. So we've really seen that most Russians uh, who are concerned about their environment, who are concerned about human rights, who are concerned about any issue of their concern, uh, they have nowhere to turn to. They can't protest. Uh, they're always living under threat that if they say something that is, is, is going to be perceived as oppositional to the government, they'll be arrested. Um, and even if they engage in peaceful activities to petition their government, they could be under threat. Wow. 
Well, we are an independent network. We have a very, very passionate audience at home who loves getting involved and loves taking on issues, um, loves to do more about things. What would you tell um, our viewers at home or who are watching online and watching this interview right now what they can do um, to get active in human rights, um, whether it's in Russia or here in the United States? You know, I would. I think there's a lot that foreign audiences can do to stand up for human rights throughout the world, uh, not just in Russia. And I know as an activist, as a member of Amnesty International, as someone who's involved in my community, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the challenges and the problems that we face. And it's easy to think about you know, the stereotypes of a, of a repressive Russian regime under a former KGB uh, President Putin who has all power. It's easy to get overwhelmed by that. But we have so many examples of when people take action, when people stand up for uh, human rights violations that are occurring against individuals, it does matter. It does have impact. One thing that Amnesty International does every year is uh, uh, it's called Write for Rights. It's an annual letter writing marathon where we, we pick 10 cases from throughout the world of individuals whose human rights are at risk. And we concentrate our advocacy. Uh, on those individuals. And we have tens of thousands of people throughout the country and throughout the world who write letters. It could be letters to the ministers of justice, it could be letters to the prosecutor's office, it could be letters to jailers, expressing solidarity with individuals whose human rights uh, are under threat. And time and time again we see that those letters work, that when individuals overseas stand up for someone else's human rights, even though they're thousands of miles away, it works, it has an impact, and sometimes it saves a life. And that's why I certainly joined Amnesty International, because I wanted to find that space where I could also have an impact on someone else's human rights. And in Russia, particularly, uh, as we are gearing up towards the Winter Olympics in February, uh, the time is now to take action for human rights in Russia. Uh, just recently, uh, there was a man, by name, his name is Michael Kosenko, and he participated in uh, some protests in Moscow, in the Bolotnia Square in Moscow, against the re-election, uh, expressing concern about the re-election of uh, Vladimir Putin. All the video evidence that we've seen shows that he was uh, protesting peacefully. Uh, he was arrested a few days later after the protest, and he was charged with participating in a riot, quote-unquote. Uh, and now he has been sentenced to forcible treatment in a psychiatric hospital, which is a chilling reminder that the Russian authorities will, will, will go to all lengths possible to stifle dissent. But we shouldn't lose hope with that. We should say, okay, well, what can we do to help Michael Kosenko? And Michael Kosenko is one of the cases that we're, we're uh, featuring in our Right for Rights. And through Right for Rights, uh, people can write letters to the prosecutor's office and ask them to release Michael Kosenko in, um, immediately and unconditionally. Uh, so we would urge folks to go to our, uh, to our website, amnestyusa.org, and sign up for Right for Rights and find ways to take action uh, to defend individuals whose human rights are being violated. Well, thank you so much, Samir. It was such an honor talking to you. Um, for folks at home, again, you've just watched uh, an interview here with Samir Gosami from Amnesty International. Please visit their website at amnesty.org. I cannot thank you from all of us here at Free Speech for your taking your time but standing behind this film. Um, and thank you for, so much for all the work that you do. No, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity. And I think, uh, as we were talking earlier, it is just a great documentary that shows the everyday acts of activism and peaceful protest that the members of Pussy Riot engaged in and what a powerful impact it has because it was those seemingly little everyday actions of protest that they engage in on a daily basis in Moscow that has reverberated throughout the world and has really helped us raise awareness about the serious human rights conditions in Russia. And I hope that your viewers will be inspired by this movie uh, to join us and others in standing up for human rights in Russia and throughout the world. So thank you very much. <laughs>